Hello YouTube. It's been a minute since I've sent a video your way. Life happens sometimes. And that's okay. The cool thing about this hobby is that people from all over the world reach out after watching my videos and I guess the feedback I get the most is where's the second part of the RC controller video? Well, I made you a promise. So without further ado, here's part two of controlling Arduino board with one of these. Last time we covered how to hook everything up, covered the code for the controller and how to read values and plot them to the screen. If you're coming here without watching that video, I really suggest you go back and watch it because everything we're going to cover today builds on the content from the last video. As always, the code for this video will be posted to my website along with everything else you need to be able to do what I'm doing here. Okay, first things first, we're going to talk about channel inversions. What happens when you push the stick right but the car turns left? We need to be able to handle that in code. Next up is dead zone adjustment. Some thumbsticks are really sensitive. Even resting your thumb on the stick can create a value. We only want to send values that are intentional. After that, we'll talk about value mapping. The megahertz values that come from the controller are not always helpful. We want to translate those into something we can use, for example, a percentage scale. And last, but by no means least, we want to talk about fail-safe protection. What if you have the throttle all the way down and suddenly the car goes out of range? It never receives the signal to stop, so that car will carry on going forward at 100% throttle till it hits something. Ask me how I know. In terms of flow, we're going to read our RC values, then we're going to process the failsafe first, safety always first, then we'll process the inversions, then the dead zones, then we'll translate our values and then output them to use by a servo or a motor or something. Some of you have reached out saying that you're putting Arduinos into RC planes and RC watercraft and so for that you need a small board. So I'm going to demo this with the Arduino Pro Micro today. It has five interrupts if you look at the attach interrupt guide on the Arduino website. So it should be just good enough for us to pull some inputs from our RC controller. Okay, let's pick up where we left off last time. The code here is almost exactly the same. I've just added an extra channel so we can play with some throttle values later on. And in the loop I've added some labels for our plotter. So it looks just how you'd expect it to look. If I wiggle the thumbsticks you can see our values plotting on the chart. Okay, let's talk fail safe. By their very nature, RC signals are the milliseconds of the wave that it gets back from the RC controller. So if it doesn't receive an end of that wave from the controller, then those milliseconds keep on counting up. So let's establish some boundaries for what our minimum and maximum values should look like for a wave. And then if it goes outside of that, let's trigger a fail condition. So I'm going to grab a ball and I'm going to put it at the top of my loop. And I'm going to use this to detect if we're in a fail safe condition or not. The next thing I'm going to do is after I've read my values, the very first thing I want to do is I want to go and check if we've failed before I do anything else. Okay, and finally, here's the block of code that processes the fail safe. So it resets it to say we're not in a failsafe condition and then it checks if we are. And the way I'm doing this is I'm translating the values from our RC controller to a percentage and I'm saying if it goes over 105% of what it should be, we're in a failsafe condition. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of my channels and I'm going to set them all to the failsafe value. Of course, to reset them to the failsafe value, I've got to go specify what a failsafe value is going to look like. So let me drop one of those up here. So just to recap, if it goes over this value by 105%, it's going to reset it to this. And for these here, that 1508 represents the middle value, so the middle of the, the joystick. And then I'm going to add at the very bottom we use this translate value into new range, which I'll talk more about when we do the value translation piece. But that just maps it into the percentage scale. Okay, so the proof really is in the pudding. So if I hit the throttle value, let's say we put it all the way up here. And then if I hold it down while I'm turning the receiver off, or the transmitter off, you see how it drops down to that middle value. And 
channel 4 which is the throttle has gone right down to its base value because its failsafe value at the very top is lower. So that works. Okay, referring back to our plan, the next thing to do is inversions. There's two types of axis, linear ones that go from say 0 to 100 and other ones that have a midpoint like a joystick does. It's important we know this when we go to start inverting our channels. So I'm going to drop some variables in the top so I can configure the type of channel. I'm also going to drop in some variables to allow me to say whether or not the channel is inverted. Here you see we're going to put 1 for inverted and 0 for not inverted. Of course next we'll pop in a call to our processing function for the inversion and then we're going to add the code to do the inversion itself. The code will loop through each of the channels in turn and it will detect if it needs to be inverted and then it's going to go through if it needs to be inverted it will check what type of channel it is whether it's linear or it has a midpoint and the math is slightly different depending on what type it is and then it will invert the channels. So by way of an example if I press up on the channel 1 stick you can see at the moment it goes up, if I press down it goes down. So let's make a change and we'll take the inversion off of channel 1. I'm going to re-upload my sketch And now when I press up on the stick, it goes down. And when I press down on the stick, it goes up. I'll call that a success. All right, next stop, dead zones. I think the easiest way to demonstrate this is to show you what happens when I just slightly lean my thumb on the control stick. So I'm barely moving my thumb at all. And it's making some changes to the values that are quite high. My aim is to make a dead zone that you can configure, say 5%, and anything below that the program will just ignore that input. Okay, first thing, you got it, some more variables. So let's put something at the top that allows us to configure what the dead zone percentage is. So I'm going to do 30% just so that we can exaggerate what's happening to show it on our chart. Then after that, we're going to put the dead zone processor into our program. And here's something important. I've put here if the failsafe is active don't do any dead zone adjustment that's because I don't want to mess with the signal if we have a dead zone situation I just wanted to read exactly what we've set at the top and then we'll go to the bottom and we'll add in our dead zone adjustment function so let me walk you through what this is it's going to loop through each of our channels and then it needs to know if it's a joystick type channel or a throttle type channel because the math again is slightly different. And I translate the values into percentages. So on the joystick channel it goes from minus 100% to 100%. On the throttle type channel it goes from 0% to 100%. And then it keeps those values positive and compares them to what you've set as the dead zone percent. And then if the value is less than the dead zone percent, it sort of pins it to the default value. So for the joystick that will be the midpoint and for the throttle that will be the low point. Okay, let's do our best to test that. So we'll upload this to the Arduino. Got my serial plotter ready. Okay, so I'll move my sticks around a little bit here, but if I try and get a very small value, you can see how it just jumps to where it's processing and then when it gets below 30% it snaps it back to zero, or snaps it back to the midpoint. So this is working, it's working pretty well. Of course the values I'm going to set will be say 5%, so they'll be much lower than this. This is very much an exaggerated form of what we're trying to achieve, but it does work. We have a dead zone right in the middle of our stick. Okay, the very last thing on our plan was to translate the values into something usable. You've seen on the left side of the chart that those numbers are not user friendly and so I'm going to map my values into something that we can use on a server or a motor say let's go from minus 100 to 100 or 0 to 90. So the first thing we're going to do is establish our new range values so the things that we're going to translate into. So I'm going to drop a couple of variables at the top. 
the translated values array gives us somewhere to store our newly translated values and then we're going to establish low, medium and high values. So for example these first channels goes from 75 to 105, channel 1 goes from 0 to 90, channel 2 goes from minus 100 to 100, same as 3 and then 4 is the throttle that goes from 0 to 100 like a percent. Then as before we're going to drop in a pointer to our function that's going to do the translation itself and then we're going to add our function. So you can see here we're going to loop through each of the channels in turn and then we're going to populate our translator value array with the new value. And so that calls a function we mentioned earlier. It passes through the existing values into this translate values into range function. And you can see I took the formula from this wonderful Stack Overflow article. I encourage you to go there if you want more information. And I took that formula and I pumped in all the values and then I return the translator value as a float. The only thing that remains now is to go to the top and make it so that our chart outputs the newly translated values rather than the existing values that come from the RC controller. And now we'll run our program and check that the new values are output to the plotter. Now you can see the numbers on the y-axis have changed and so I'm playing around with the left stick and you can see it's staying within the values that we set. Channel 0 goes from 75 to 105, channel 1 goes from 0 to 90, channel 2 and 3 go from minus 100 to 100 and then finally channel 4 goes from 0 to 100% and that's the throttle. Now I did promise usable values so let's add the servo library in at the top of the file. We've defined two servos on two pins coming off the Leonardo. We're going to need to set up those servos, so we're going to attach those here to the server 1 and server 2 pins. And then in our loop, I'm going to say write to those servos, those two translated values. I have a continuous servo and an angled servo hooked up. Oops. You can see as I move the stick, the, uh, the servo arm moves. And the up and down controls a continuous rotation servo. So there you go. And that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, please drop me a like or a subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.